Hey guys, Buff Elgato here. I want to show you the new tactical rifle that just hit uh, Cold War, Warzone, and Plunder. Today is May the 7th, uh, 2021, of course. But just in case, somebody's watching this way down the road. Um, so the name of the gun is the Carve Point Two, I guess we can call it. Carve. I'm going to show you how to unlock it, um, what I've noticed about it so far, give you my opinion. Don't have too much of an opinion except for the base part of the gun because as you can see I don't have much unlocked for it. So to get the gun, you, <coughs> sorry, to get the gun, you have to get two quick kills in multiplayer with a tactical rifle. So um, I'm pretty sure you can unlock this in plunder and in Warzone, but I'm guessing each plunder game and each Warzone game only count as one. You have to do this 10 times. Uh, I know they're pushing Cold War on you guys. They want you to buy this game. That's why I said it months ago. Every gun that's OP turns out to be a Cold War gun. They do it on purpose so that you'll end up purchasing this game because you're constantly being killed by it in Warzone. Things like that. Anyway. They actually worded it right. Uh, they said that you have to get two quick kills with a tactical rifle and finish the game in 10 games. That is correct. The way they worded it is correct. In case you don't know, if you're ever trying to unlock a gun in Modern Warfare uh, multiplayer, as soon as you do the challenge, whether it's like get two quick kills, get three kills and smoke, whatever it is, you can instantly leave in Modern Warfare. You cannot do that in Cold War. In Cold War, when you're trying to unlock a gun, you must finish that match. Because what will happen is, let's say I am 5 out of 10 and I finished 5 games, right? Let's say the next 5, I want to quit early. I get my two quick kills, I leave early. It will keep progress. It'll say I got 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, right? But once you hit 10 and you finish that game, it will count up how many games you did not finish and reset you. So it'll go up to 10 out of 10, but then once you finish that game, it'll knock you back down to 5 out of 10, right? Because it only counts the games that you finish. You have to finish those games. So anyway, what I did was I took my M16. I want to show you the loadout that I picked. I would recommend the M16 or the AUG because it's burst fire tactical rifles. So all you have to do is just really hit the trigger one time. And, you know, if the first bullet doesn't kill on the second or third wheel, you also have that chance of the second or third bullet possibly going through them and hitting one of their teammates that's behind them, giving you those two quick kills. The two quick kills, they don't have to be right on top of each other like Modern Warfare usually counts them. They can actually be like three or four seconds apart. It doesn't have to be like kill, kill. It actually can be a couple seconds apart. And what I recommend is going to 24-7 Nuke Town on Hardcore and running the M16 or the AUG and just keep doing it. You can get it one per game. You got to do it 10 games, two kills pretty quick. It's easy. Everybody knows that sometimes you can actually, you know, spawn kill the enemy it's cheap but it's an easy way to get this gun uh i would recommend that if you do not have cold war you cannot pick this gun in modern warfare multiplayer but you can pick it in plunder or war zone being that it's a cold war gun and plunder is modern warfare I am not sure if you have to finish the plunder match. If you can just go in, get two kills in the lobby or two kills right away and leave. 
it will count one out of 10, but once you hit 10, like I said, I am not sure I was not about to go through a 45 minute game and only get it counted one time. I wasn't about to do it. I own Cold War. Um, it's worth it in the long run to me because I can level up all these guns very, very quickly on 24-7 Nuketown. It's way faster than Warzone, way faster than Plunder. Warzone, as long as you have the gun on your body, you can do certain missions, things like that. It'll, it'll level up. On Plunder, it doesn't matter how many boxes you open, you do not get experience for these guns, for the Cold War guns. You have to actually get kills with them. And even then, like right now, it's a double XP on Modern Warfare. Even with that, it is not, uh, you do not get as much experience as you do playing just one game of Nuketown um, on Hardcore in Cold War. Uh, the game is 10 minutes long, got a 10 minute timer, and I can level this gun up five times. Five times a game. Uh, I am getting a lot of kills, probably about 30 or 40, but um, that's just easier for me. Now, what I've noticed about this gun is it is dead accurate. It is dead accurate. This thing's more accurate than the M16, which really doesn't make any sense. That's with nothing on it. With nothing on it, it is probably got the best recoil almost as any gun on this game. The damage is pretty good from medium to far. Um, I wanted to test it because we know what a lot of these guns, they don't act the same when you bring them from Cold War over to Warzone and Plunder. They'll act different. They have more recoil. They they shoot a little different, got a little bit different damage, things like that. So I wanted to test it because I, you know, of course I was playing hardcore on Nuketown and uh, that is not what Warzone is. It takes a lot of bullets to down somebody usually, depending on the gun and where you shoot them at. But anyway, I wanted to test this gun and that's exactly what I did. For what I have on this gun, I do wish that the power was a little stronger. Um, it is the weakest of all of the tactical rifles. It is the weakest. Every uh, There's five tactical rifles, I believe there is. And um, Type 63, the M16, the AUG, the DMR14, and the CARV. Yes, there's five. And all of the other tactical rifles are stronger than this. Now, to make up for it, this gun has very, very little recoil, and it's also burst. You can actually increase the speed of the burst. I know they just did a buff with the M16, making it shoot faster uh, if you pick the uh, fire rate for it. Um, but the Carve is it's a really nice gun, and I don't even have everything unlocked for it. I will be putting a monolithic suppressor or the agency, um, one of the stronger barrels on it to make it stronger. Uh, things like that. You have different um, magazines for it. You, the very first thing you get is the 54 round drum, which is probably something I'll, if I put anything on this gun, as far as uh, bullets magazine, it will be this. You actually don't need it. This gun holds 45 rounds already. If you think about it, no matter what you're running, <laughs> Kilo, uh, Grawl, M4, um, I don't know what you're running, Amax, whatever, you're probably running a 50 or 60 round mag anyway. So this already comes with 45. So you can put the 54 on. It gives you the extra nine bullets instead of 45. It's nine, so you got three more uh, burst fires with it. Uh, but you got a negative 10% reload quickness. There's a few other ones, 20% uh, reload quickness. You got the 45. This might be the best way to go because 45, I think, is plenty. But now you have a 20% reload. Uh, once you get past that, you got the 66, 63, and the 75. Uh, you start getting these aim down sight times, things like that. Um, 
The SAS mag clamp probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Negative six aim down sight isn't too bad for the only con. You can make up for that somewhere else, but that 35% reload quickness, that might be very, that might be uh, well worth it. The optics, I would definitely go with the axle arms uh, three times once you unlock it. A lot of people don't know this, but the three times scope in Modern Warfare and in Cold War has a hidden perk. It uh, takes away 9% of the recoil on vertical and horizontal. If you ever use it compared to other scopes, the three times um, you have a much better recoil pattern is because it takes away the 9% uh, going vertical and going horizontal. It's just a hidden perk that's always been in the game. When it comes to muzzle, I'm going to be going with agency. You're going to be losing some bullet velocity. Um, but I think it's going to be worth it for the concealment. And also you got the 15% vertical recoil control there. Now you need to carry some of these stats. You need to write down these stats because whenever you go over to Warzone, it is not going to tell you by the number what it does. It'll just say um, damage distance, uh, uh, you know, concealment, things like that. It's not going to tell you all these percentages and stuff. Some of the guns, some of the parts they changed are different. Like it might not even. Uh, the shoot move speed horizontal recoil like this right here you might go over to war zone it might not even mention that some of these parts change when they cross over to the games but i would still write them down just in case uh, so i'd probably go agency uh, um, suppressor on the barrel i would probably go task force you only get eight percent damage you get a 33% uh, effective damage range, 50% bullet velocity, which will make up for the bullet velocity you're losing on the agency suppressor. You have the negative 10% vertical recoil control, negative 10% horizontal, but your three times scope is going to basically null that out. Okay. So uh, body, I wouldn't worry about any of this. Now all this stuff is revealed distance, hip fire accuracy. If you've been watching some other videos on YouTube, some of these lasers and flashlights for the Cold War weapons. Um, a lot of times they have uh, different things they do once you switch it over to uh, Modern Warfare. Um, for Warzone, they might have a different description of what they do. I would check that out. The underbarrel, y'all, you can't go wrong with the Field Agent 4 grip. You get the plus 10% vertical recoil and the plus 40% horizontal. And like I said, once you get this gun, don't put anything on it. Just aim down sights and shoot, and you will see this gun has very, very, very little recoil at all. So this gun's going to be a laser. This this might be OP. This might be an OP gun for a little while with the right attachments. I already talked about the magazine. I would either go nothing or go 54-round uh, drum or the SAS mag clamp. Handle. Uh, I know some people always go Serpent. I like to go Airborne. Serpent, you get a 25% aim down sight. Uh, the Airborne, you get 30 plus, you get flinch resistance. Nobody really cares about aiming going uh, while prone. Um, some of you might. I know some of you, uh, every time you shoot, you lay down. This might be good for you. Um, some of your running gun, you can set this up for more of a hip fire uh, gun if you like to. If you want to go for a hip fire, I wouldn't pick one of these. I'd go for the one of the bodies up here and get the hip fire accuracy and um, run around and just shoot from the hip. Because uh, you can make this really quick, like a SMG, but the power of uh, an assault rifle. Stock, if you're uh, going to be uh, running hip or um, aiming down sight, this is pretty good picking uh, sprint the fire time you can't go wrong with the raider pad this is something i would probably put on if you're not going to run a mag if you're going to keep it at 45 rounds i would put this on but this is going to be for aiming down sight because right now if you put this on you're going to have a 30 percent um hip fire accuracy deduction so if you're going to be aiming down sight, you don't have to worry about that con. This is strictly for pros. Um, 
But like I said, it depends on whether you want to run aiming down sight or from the hip. I would say aim down sight. Try to put the stock, the handle, under barrel and uh, barrel on. And then if you want the muzzle on and optic, I'd probably decide getting rid of the handle and stock. Most guns will be running war zone anyway is going to be optic, um, muzzle barrel, under barrel. And then you got a fifth one. You need to go magazine, handle, or stock. And that's where you want to choose whether you want to go hip firing or aiming down sight. If you're going down aiming down sight, I'd probably go with the handle. Um, anyway, uh, I love the gun. I think it's great. Uh, aiming down sight, the iron sights are pretty clean. It's tested out. The recoil is amazing on it. It's pretty strong. It's not as strong as the other tacticals, but it does shoot faster. Uh, does handle better. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to show you some more footage of me using this in combat. You let me know what you think. But that is how you unlock it, and that's what I think about the gun. Um, really easy to unlock. Just remember, you got to finish the matches. All right, guys. Enough of me talking. If you like the video, please hit like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Please share it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.